of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe and live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe and live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe and live for you. Oh, and live for you. Holy and holy, there is no one like I'm beside you, open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. And I will build upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken and holy there is no one like you there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. It is right and good to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, who is worthy of our worship. Listen to these words from Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. 
you are worthy because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Praise be to our Lord and God. Welcome. Welcome to this time of worship. Welcome to Campbell Church. Welcome to Sunday Different. We gather online to worship God, to listen to his word, to heed his voice, to lift our concerns and our very lives to him as an offering back for all he has done for us. Let me share with you a prayer. Pray with me this prayer which comes uh, from the Northumbria Community's Liturgy. Let everything that has life, let everything that has breath, give all the glory and honour and praise to the one who overcame death. Let every living thing sing of the mercies of our God. Let us exalt him wherever we live, with thanksgiving and joy in our hearts. If we don't praise him, the mountains will. If we don't exalt him, the rocks will cry out in our stead. God is not dead. Let every living thing Sing of the mercies of our God. Let us exalt him wherever we live with thanksgiving and joy in our hearts. Let's worship God. Let's continue in the worship of God. Chose the cross with every breath, the perfect life, the perfect death. You chose the cross, the crown of thorns you offer us, the crown is with eternal life. You chose the cross. Though your soul was overwhelmed with pain, obedient to death, you overcame. I'm lost in wonder. I'm lost in love. I'm lost in praise for evermore because of Jesus. I'm failing love, I am forgiven, I am restored. You loose the cause of sinfulness, you broke the chains of my disgrace, you chose the cross. Oh, from the grave victorious, you rose against the glorious. You chose the cross. The sorrow that surrounded you was mine. Yet not my will, but yours be done. You cried and lost in wonder. I'm lost in love, I'm lost in praise for evermore because of Jesus. I'm failing love, I am forgiven, I am restored. I'm lost in one, I'm lost in love. Lost in praise for ever. 
As I say to my grown-up children, never lose your inner child. And I like to think I haven't lost mine. I'm here in the playground, the Roman playground, in uh, Lower Campbell. And uh, there's lots of facilities for children here in Campbell. There's lots of facilities everywhere for children. Children are important. Childhood is important in our society. But it hasn't always been like that. A few hundred years ago in this country, children, poor children, weren't even named till they got older in case they didn't survive. They wasn't valued when they were younger. I think things were a bit better in Roman times, but not much, judging by the story. Today in Young Church, the disciples shooed children away. Jesus wasn't having any of that, I can tell you. And I think it's remarkable how much children are mentioned in the Bible, considering that even in Roman times, they weren't really valued that much, especially poorer children. Not only Jesus' childhood, as we've been looking at in Young Church, but there's other ch children mentioned, Samuel and David. And not only specific children, but children in general. Jesus spoke about children in general and said that adults have something to learn from children about the kingdom of heaven. Some people say children are the church of tomorrow. But I say no. They're the church of today. And they've got something very valuable to say and to help us in our faith. Listen to the story today and see what you think. Good morning. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 11 to 15, and chapter 8, verses 40 to 42, and 49 to 56. Soon afterwards, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her, and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, 
and Jesus gave him to his mother. Now, when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And then there came a man named Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about twelve years old, who was dying. As he went, the crowds pressed in on him. And while he was speaking, someone came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. When Jesus heard this, he replied, Do not fear, only believe, and she will be saved. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him, except for Peter, John and James, and the child's father and mother. They were all weeping and wailing for her. But he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and called out, Child, get up. Her spirit returned and she got up at once. Then he directed them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astounded. But he ordered them to tell no one about what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On Monday afternoon, a woman not much older than me, whom I knew from a previous church, a woman I spent much time walking alongside, a woman I had the privilege of baptising, was outside in the snow, she collapsed and died with her son, a young man beside her, performing CPR, but without success, and she died. And the week before that, we heard of the death from Covid of one of the mothers in the primary school where our own children attended when we lived in Kent. Somebody younger than me. We are surrounded by death. Sometimes we know the names, we know the people. Sometimes they are our nearest and dearest. And the more than 100,000 COVID related deaths in this country alone, they are all known and loved. They're all known and loved by God with all known and loved by people, often people who could not be with them at the end. There is much death and there is much grief. These are facts and realities of life. There is no sidestepping these things. Jesus encountered death and he encountered grief. In our gospel stories, he meets with Jairus and his family. And he meets the widow in Nain, who is about to bury her son. Now, both of those stories end with 
miraculous intervention by Jesus. And these people are raised to life. But Jesus also knew death and grief when there was no raising of the dead. Now, don't get me wrong, those miraculous raisings of the dead point to Jesus' mastery over death, his identity as the one who is Lord of all. But, but even he knew death and wept, wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus. Even though he knew that raising was coming. And think about Joseph. When Jesus was 12, Joseph was very much part of his life and part of the story. By the time Jesus was 30. He has gone. He is not part of Jesus' life anymore. Almost certainly he had died. People, the Gospels, talk about Jesus' mother and his brothers, but they don't speak of Joseph after he's 12. Jesus knew grief. And Jairus in this story, Jairus, who leaves the bedside of his sick daughter to seek out Jesus. And in so doing, he misses being there at the end. Like so many others, so many who've not been able to be there at that moment with their nearest and dearest. Just in recent days, a colleague, Baptist colleague and friend of mine shared how on Wednesday his mother was being cremated and he was not there. He had not been there when she died, could not be there when she was cremated. These are hard times in which to grieve. The widow in name. The widow in name. She'd already known loss and death. Her husband had gone. And now her young son, well, I say young son, a, a young man describes him as a young man, possibly in that patriarchal kind of male dominated society. He was her security. He was not just her son, but her pension plan, her security for old age and for tomorrow and next week too. Gone. And it's recorded that Jesus' heart went out to her. Death still brings with it, even today, financial insecurity frequently for other members of the family. I told you about this woman who collapsed and died on Monday. On Tuesday morning, her son rang the landlord and uh, was told that he should be out of the accommodation that day. 
utterly illegal, don't get me wrong, utterly disgraceful behaviour from the landlord. But people can often be financially vulnerable and, and, and prey to exploitation at these vulnerable moments in their lives. Hmm. But Jesus understands his heart goes out to that widow. He weeps at the grave of his friend. These stories remind us that Jesus, Jesus understands our human condition. He enters into it. He shares our emotional journey. He weeps like we weep. And often, as we think about God's heart for mental health, it is those who are, as it were, the nearest and dearest of those who are going through troubled times, who go through it just as much and sometimes more. The child who watches their parent or, or the person who watches their parent go into dementia and suffer from that. The marriage partner who, who witnesses the depression of their other half. Parents who, who walk alongside and feel powerless when their children self-harm or get caught up in all kinds of addictions. Because mental health problems affect not just individuals, they affect families and communities. The ripple out effect is huge. As I said, I think it can sometimes be harder for those who walk alongside. Hmm. Well, there are many problems that we uh, might think about. We've looked at depression a little and anxiety and psychosis. Addiction is another mental health problem. And one which is very difficult for those who walk alongside. So many suffering from one kind of addiction or another. In uh, the UK, maybe 19% of people, 19 people out of 100, chemically addicted to nicotine. Six out of a hundred, six percent addicted to alcohol. Maybe one percent addicted to other kinds of drugs. Maybe more. And the, these are the kind of physical addictions and there can also be psychological addictions. Gambling, pornography. And so difficult for those who walk alongside. But the key often is to know that you are understood, that you are not alone. Jesus entered our human condition and understands our emotions and problems from the inside. And almost always People who are suffering find it immensely helpful when people who have gone through similar experiences walk alongside them. Sometimes it's not the expert, it's the person who has gone through the same thing, not the one who has all the book knowledge. 
one who understands. That's why mutual care groups can be really important. People who've gone through similar experiences, similar problems. It's not necessarily solutions that are needed all the time, but understanding. Yes, there are medical treatments and help of all kinds. And I'm certainly not dismissing any of that. But I'm also wanting not to minimise the importance of walking alongside and people being listened to and understood. Let me conclude with what might seem a, a trivial example and in many ways compared with some of what we've been talking about it is but I found it very instructive there was a moment in my 20s when I was exploring my call into ordained pastoral ministry and a door closed a door closed which I had expected to be open and expected to be able to walk through and Various people helped me and talked to me about the decisions which had been made, which delayed, as I saw it, delayed my entry into pastoral ministry. My minister helped me. Lots of people helped me and talked to me and understood. But, but I can remember one friend who'd been through a very similar experience was in some ways more helpful than all the others because he said this he looked at me and he said and excuse the language i'm going to quote it exactly he just looked at me and knew my frustration and my difficulty and he just looked at me and said crap isn't it and suddenly there was someone who had walked the road and who understood, who understood what I was going through. And in that moment, that not even five words, and one of them quite earthy, I was understood. I was understood. And in that moment, I felt a release and I could move forward. Well, how do we walk alongside others? And who might be the others who we need to walk alongside us? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you know our human experience from the inside. That you tenderly understand us and help us to be those who tenderly understand others and help us to be those who care for one another and allow ourselves to be cared for in jesus name amen
The weeping may come in the night, there'll be joy in the morning. When the taste of our tears is replaced with the feast of the Lord. And our enemy death is consumed in the blaze of God's glory. And our grief. Will be no more. We are heavy with sorrow, but this burden. Not last. There is joy yet to follow. There is glory unsurpassed, and our strength for tomorrow is our perfect hope in Christ. May Jesus lead you through your life. The weeping may come in the night. There'll be joy in the morning. When the taste of our tears is replaced with the feast of the Lord, and our enemy death is consumed in the blaze of God's glory, and our grief. Will be no more. Oh, oh, oh. The weeping may come in the night. There'll be joy in the morning. When the taste of our tears is replaced with the feast of the Lord, and our enemy death is consumed in the blaze of God's glory, and our grief will be no more. Lord, we bring our prayers to you now. We pray for all the things that have happened in this past week, the things we wish we'd done differently, and the things we're not proud of. We hand this to you and ask you to help us to do what we can to avoid these mistakes next week. Forgive us for when we've been unkind or impatient, and help us this week to be patient. If we've been unkind, help us to say sorry. Help us to stop before we speak any unkindness and fill us with your love and compassion for others. We pray for those who are struggling for whatever reason. Everyone has their own burdens. So Lord, we pray that you would help them to turn to you for rest and relief. Father, we pray that they and we can find refuge in you when we find the challenges too much for us. We pray for all those who are still going out to work who may be anxious about catching the virus. We pray for those who work from home without the usual change of scene and peer support. For those who are trying to help their children with their schoolwork, alongside their own work and the challenges that that brings. We pray for the children who are having to be more independent than they've ever been before. For those who find it hard and who are struggling to get the work done. We pray for the parents trying to help them the best way they know, but maybe feel in- inadequate. Lord, we pray for the ch- parents also as they try to explain to the children about the danger of the virus, but also not wanting to make them anxious or upset. Help them to help their children to feel safe and secure. 
And Lord, we pray for those whose mental health has taken a hit during this time, for those who are struggling to stay focused, and those who feel the burden of so much to do and yet manage to get very little done. Help us all to take time to be still and to reach out to you for help. Help us to find those times of quiet and calm, to reset our thinking, to draw strength from you. Help us to find activities to do that are good for us, for our well-being, and help us also to help our children to do things that will help them to feel positive and be able to cope with doing their schoolwork at home and not going out or seeing their friends as they usually would. We pray for our church community, and I pray especially, Lord, for those who feel isolated, cut off or disconnected. Help them to know that they are loved and missed. Help us to look out for one another. Thank you for those who are working so hard to lead the church right now. Give them wisdom and show us all what you want us to be doing here in Camborne right now. So Lord, we pray for the week ahead. We pray that you'll help us just to know your presence with us each day in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. 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 Stony ground, 
gladly walk upon our knees. So we cry out, come change his Lord into a church that loves your word. We will return to knowing you. With joy we walk beneath the cross. We will thank you for saving our souls. For you've shown us the truth in your word. We will take up the cross and follow you. Now we live for the glory of God. We will thank you for saving our souls. For you've shown us the truth in your word. We will take up the cross and follow you. Now we live for the glory of God. Now we live for the glory of God. Now we live for glory of God. We come to the end of our time of worship, gathered worship this morning. May we walk from this gathering, trusting in God. May we walk from this gathering, enlightened by God. May we walk from this gathering encouraged by God. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, bless us as we go. May we know your mercy and your strength and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.